What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining us. In this episode, I've got the cylinder head back from engineering. I know exactly what happened and uh, we're going to get stuck into rebuilding this motor and getting it back in the car ahead of the race on the 18th of November so it's not far from where we are now so uh, there's so much to do. Uh, I might split it over two episodes, I might not get the engine in this week so we'll release whatever we can this week and then release the balance of the footage next week ahead of the race. So. Without further ado, let's get stuck in. I'm Jacques from SSBB Builds. I've been racing front wheel drive for over eight years. I won a championship, came runner up and two others. I'm building this BMW to find out what it's like to be involved with rear wheel drive cars and the classic BMW heritage. Join me on this discovery as I share my passion. Just cleaning off the dry silicon. And the reason we put silicon on these joints, this is where the front cover or the back cover made to the block, is that this is a potential leaking point. So it's the same as on the cylinder head, bit of silicon gasket sealer. I can put some, just enough on there. This is a good brand, this Loctite brand. Very good. Avoid cheap gasket sealers. Make sure the sump is clean. So I cleaned the sump thoroughly. I'll line up the holes as well as possible to avoid uh, the gasket slipping. Now we'll put the bolts. We we'll start from the inside out. Okay, let's turn this puppy over. Sump is on. She's almost ready for the head. So the goal is to get the head on. Obviously in this episode, we're gonna get it on and I don't know if we'll fully get it in, but we'll definitely get that. So from here, let's jump onto the cylinder head and see what happened. <coughs> All right, so here is the cylinder head back from KWT Engineering, King Williamstown Engineering. And let's see. Now, when I was in communication with them, they said that there was, there were three, four exhaust valves bent. So quite a few of the lifters actually failed. And so we made the executive decision to actually go to, to solid lifters. So this is something important to note. So when you are transporting a head, a cylinder head, make sure that the head is upside down when you transport it because of the valves that stick out. Now, this is obviously if you have the cams inside the cylinder head. If you look across, you can see the valve sticking out past the face of the head. So now if you put this flat on its face, flat on this surface, there's a very good risk of bending these valves. So you'll see that cylinder number two Cylinder number six valves are open. And uh, so yes, there is a very good risk of bending the valves if you transport it face down. So just always remember that, or just take the bolts off, loosen the pressure on the cams. Looking good. This is a nice hit. Oh! So it looks like they did a really good job. It's nice and clean. So what I need to do now effectively is clean the top of the block, get that all prepped. I have a brand new cylinder head gasket over here and uh, really just get stuck into getting that thing ready so that I can bolt it back on and uh, we can make some headway. Getting a bit late tonight so I'm doing this after work, uh, I'm just running out of time, but either way, we're just going to keep pushing. If you want to see some more of this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Just click on the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you're good to go. Okay, so we'll wipe everything down, nice and clean. Looks like they just gave it a little lick. So cylinder number four is where most of the damage was. But look at this, it's looking amazing. Chef's kiss. Okay, let's get this head gasket out of here. M52 head gasket, not the uh, M54 head gasket. Okay, 
Oh man. Looks like there's a bit of damage on this. Oh. So, the cylinder head gasket I got has a problem. So now I've got my back against the ball here with time. So this is a, an oil gallery. So I don't know if oil passes through here, but you definitely don't want oil traveling from there into there. Now I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. I think it's closed. So maybe perhaps it's not an issue. Let me ask a friend. All right, so I'm not going to go ahead with this. I'm just too concerned about the, the motor losing oil pressure and i'm under pressure with time here but also i can't take the risk on something like this because if we put it all together and the thing has very low oil pressure that's going to be a problem unfortunately there's nothing else i can do now what i need to do is get a new cylinder head gasket from the supplier and uh, this one what had happened is it looks like somewhere in their ownership it is bent right on this line it kind of got bent and then it broke off a piece of the head gasket there so it's just a tiny piece but it's enough that the oil pressure from the supply gallery which is going into the head um, goes into the head stud hole so it's just not going to work and unfortunately i can't really do much now so we'll have to wait till tomorrow to get the head back and uh, to get the gasket so that we can continue a few moments later all right so it is the next day here and i have managed to get another cylinder head gasket thank you to mike for sorting me out here yeah, i never went, really went back to the original supplier but uh, just because of time constraints so mike said he had one it's a victor heinz victor Rhines one which is good quality so ultimately what we're going to do is get that get this puppy ready get the head on so first things first uh, we need to turn it to tdc so that the valves don't clash Get the chain out, that's all fine, and find the mark, right, TDC, let's just clean this deck surface, okay, bada bing bada boom, that looks good, so that's on, happiness, time to install the head, oh, that is heavy. That is on. Put AOP Ultra Torque Lube on the bolts, on the head and on the thread. Okay, let's send these bolts down. Definitely took a while to get all of them in. Let's get the torque range. 30, 90, 90. We start off with 30, work our way out. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So we count 14. 1. We start with one motion. 2. 14. So always inside out. 14 done. So that's 30 newtons. Now we need to do 90 degrees and then 90 degrees. So let's go. 1, 40, 40, Whew, there we go, done, all right, cylinder head gasket on, done, cylinder head torqued, that was a lot of work, it's the two six moles that go inside the cylinder head. No movement at all. Now we must install the chain guide. After this, it's simply a matter of, I say simply, it's a matter of assembly, but this is the technical part, which we can't get wrong. Bottom chain tensioner in, chain tensioner going on. Torque these up. Oh man, I don't even know how many times I've done this. 
we are doing it again. So we put this on. Got to get this thing engaged as close as possible. Cam timing is still. This is a uh, brake caliper tool. Now we need to rotate the exhaust sprocket anti-clockwise while pushing this thing in so that it catches. Looks like it's caught there. It should still have range of movement. Tap this on. Okay, so Vanos is on. So basically the Vanos is in. It's level, it's, it's flush. And you can see that the slot is in the, the bolt hole is in the middle of the slot. So when we put the plate on, fasten the bolts, then this should be able to activate. It's basically this, this sprocket is going to activate as soon as the Vanos activates. So now we put the plate on. Do not drop the bolts into the sump. That will be catastrophic. That will suck mega. Okay, now need to not drop these down the bottom. Done. Pull the chain. Everything should be good. So we turn the motor over twice and uh, make sure we're all good on our timing marks. So just watch that. So we're going to go. That's one. Two. So if I look exactly TDC, we're still good on our timing marks. I use a straight edge across the back of the cams, and that's that. All right, so what I'm gonna do just going to run through all of these cam caps. Got quite a thick oil here, so protect it from startup. We're just going to put a couple of bits over the cam. And we'll do the exhaust at the same time. Oil over the camshaft. Let's put this intake splash cover on. Intake cam splash cover. That's to stop oil running out of the breather in high load situations in these corners on the valve cover gasket. This is where it's most susceptible to leaks in those corners. Hopefully I have not missed anything. Just go over it. That's all torqued. Everything's torqued. It's tight. It's ready. Okay, now we need to get the bolts for the valve cover. All right, so we're going to lube up these, these rubber grommets just so that the uh, so that the uh, captive bolts can run in easily and uh, basically don't chew up the rubber start from the middle all good that is looking mighty fine all right, so now it's time to introduce some new parts to the build. So what we are doing is essentially we are eliminating variables. And one of those variables are these old Bosch coils. Now these coils were really good. They were state of the art in the day. This car, remember, is a 1996 model, so it is old. And uh, this was really state of the art technology. With the cam sensor working, you could run effectively individual plug fire with these and it gave you a lot more control and um, a higher spark. So it improved the efficiency. So move forward almost 30 years and we have a much newer coil. Now the thing with these is that they use a lot more power to run them. Um, some of the local South African ECUs can't run these. You need a separate coil module to run these. However, the ECU masters can, and that's how we've been running them, but you have to run um, the dwell time quite high, something like that. 
um, to get the spark out of them and uh, these don't like that so they inevitably fail and uh, so we're going to eliminate that variable with these new Audi R8 coils and uh, this is a, just a much better coil much more reliable doesn't use as much uh, to run it and it's this is a genuine Volkswagen group coil so a lot of the guys run these on the turbo cars and in our applications so we've got six of these that we're going to run they just fit on the advantage is also that in Maputo I think you saw that these nuts kept pulling out out of the magnesium cover so we won't have that problem anymore which is fantastic these just slip on and lock onto the plug so the other thing is we've had to change the plugs on this harness and uh, thank you Mike uh, Ramsey he helped me a lot with this he supplied these for me and then also changed the plugs for me into this harness so effectively we'll, we'll, it'll be quite literally a plug and play and then I'll just change the settings on the ECU so that is fantastic the other variable we had which I think if you remember from the Maputo races we thought that the injectors weren't firing correctly and some of them were really touch and go to eliminate any sort of lean condition the motor might experience although we have an O2 sensor um, sorry a lambda sensor in the exhaust it is only right at the back after the collector so we don't know individually if a cylinder is running lean if it picks up knock it'll find it maybe somewhere and then reduce the timing or whatever but it might be too late anyway so we're changing to brand new injectors it's just the right thing to do and these Bosch these are Bosch 440 cc injectors and uh, these will really 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 take us a long way to um, protecting the motor and enable it to run perfectly so what we're going to do is just chuck these in and see how it looks So some of you were asking in the comments why do I have a set of green injectors and a set of pink injectors in the motor. So the answer is when we were in Maputu we, uh, and we tested the injectors to try to find the misfire we found that some of them were faulty. So we found a used set of injectors uh, which are the green injectors and we replaced the last three because those looked like they weren't firing properly. Um, but in the end obviously it was the uh, hydraulic lifter so that's why some of the three of them are pink three of them are green the pinks are the originals those are they do work but they're at the upper end of their uh, capacity and these are also 26 odd years old just like the coil so we change again okay so we need to get these old injectors out. Wow, that's quite a difference, eh? Man, this is going to be such a good car. Put the clips back in. Use original clips. There we go. So lube the O rings so that they slip in nicely. Okay, then we insert. The new injectors like a glove. Alright, so that's going to be a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. It looks like we got some really, really good progress done. 
We did, got the head on, got the cam timing done. We've put in the new coils. Uh, we've put in the new injectors. From here, we just need to, I just need to keep assembling um, this motor. So I've run out of time, unfortunately. Uh, so I need to get this episode out so that it can air Friday. Um, but in the meantime, we're gonna keep pushing. The race is next weekend. Uh, it's on the 18th of November. I've entered the race, so we definitely committed to doing it and uh, we should be able to. There should be no reason not to. So basically from here, it's really just about bolting on all of the peripherals. Um, it's straightforward. It's really just a slog. Get it all together, get the flywheel on, clutch on, torque it all up. Um, get uh, bolt on the gearbox, get it back in the car and then just go through the assembly. From there, once it's in the car, I need to change a few calibration settings on the ECU to allow for the coils and the new injectors. And once that's done, we should be able to start it. Uh, we'll start it, run it up, get, well, we'll first crank for oil pressure, make sure it has oil pressure with it, uh, the running, or the, the cheap oil. And then we'll crank it up, get the oil pressure, get it started, run it till it gets up to temp, uh, switch it off, drain the oil, put in the good oil so that we're ready to go to the dyno on Monday. So that is the plan. Um, so the next episode will be the Friday before the race. And uh, yeah, that'll be hopefully this car getting all ready for the race. So. It's exciting, there's a lot to do in a very short space of time, but uh, I, th I feel like we've, we, we, we are there, you know, we, we come on, we've come a long way basically. And the car, we're just gonna have to figure it all out. So I don't expect any super fancy results. The goal is to do a race with this car. It deserves it, everybody that's been supporting this channel and us have, uh, do deserve it. So anyway, I'm jibber-jabbering. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.